Christmas time is here! Hey everyone, welcome to The Office Field Guide. I'm reviewing every episode of The Office ever, and today we're looking at Christmas Wishes, the Christmas episode from season eight, which makes this a Christmas field guide. And I'm just gonna pretend it's not 110 degrees outside and pretend hopefully that you don't hear all the cicadas going. Much like the actors are pretending they're not actually shooting in LA. Christmas Wishes is an episode that's going to make everyone's list of the top seven Christmas-themed episodes of The Office, and I won't be talking about my wife today at all, don't worry, uh, but I will have a clip from Napoleon Dynamite. With that, let's go. I understand nothing. Dropping us right into the setup for the story, the cold opening begins with a conference room meeting with Santa Andy as he explains the goal this year is to make everyone's Christmas wishes come true. This episode was written by Mindy Kaling, who also wrote two other Christmas episodes, none of which were included in Stanley's rant. A Honolulu Christmas, a Pulp Fiction Christmas, a Muslim Christmas, Moroccan Christmas, Morocco Christmas. That rant is perfect, by the way, an excellent use of Stanley, fantastic joke. Uh, we did get a Moroccan Christmas episode, but we are missing footage of the rest of them. So if anyone wants to jimmy up some Photoshop or have an AI work up some of these Christmases that we didn't get, drop them in the Discord or shoot me an email. I'll add them to the season wrap up. It seems like a way to have some fun. So I did take a stab at this with the Morocco Christmas and it gave me this terrifying image. Speaking of Kayleen, her fingerprints are all over Christmas wishes between the chaos, the cringe, and the conflicted main characters split between an erratic decision and a safe choice, which is a very Michael Scott situation to be in. Not to mention, Andy has like some real Michael Scott mannerisms going on, not just with the Santa costume, but like even the way he communicates. I'm gonna speak in a language you both understand. Monet. What was it? What is it? It's money. Where are you going? To Canada. Where is it? Canada. Okay. But in this episode, the boss's behavior does seem to be genuinely altruistic, even purchasing Dwight an acre of beachfront property on the moon. But Andy does have a wish of his own. My biggest wish is that you all get along well with Jessica. Which has Aaron acting especially weird. Andy's ex is meeting his sex. And is that a thing? Like, I could see some alpha bros with a podcast saying something like that, but... His worlds are colliding. Worlds are colliding! And an insecure Andy has a lot already on his mind. Now, if you're not talking about my penis. The B-plots he's Jim and Dwight's prank war come to a head after all these years. This is after their desk mate, Kathy, who's totally watching them, by the way, until they turn around, begins to complain about the stunts getting in the way of her job. Andy threatens to displace one of their bonuses to the other if either of them get caught in another complaint. This creates a reverse prank off in which both of them try to one up each other to get their hands on that extra bonus money. It starts with entrapment, but it goes deeper as the day goes on and they take it into their own hands to outdo one another. Use my credit card numbers to send a $200 bouquet of flowers to my wife. What's his name? Henrietta. Oh, what? Oh, Just found this on my desk. And Need to talk to somebody about it. This is fireable. Now, Ed Helms directed this episode himself. Respect the hat. So I'm not 100% sure how all of this shook out in the editing room, but there is some deleted content that does give us context as to why Kathy felt that she was trapped in the middle here. Jim, this package came for you. Do you want me to put it on your desk? Great, thank you. I can't wait to see the look on his face when that falls on my face. <laughs> Damn it, Kathy! And yes, one last element for Christmas wishes is that Robert California has decided to join them in Scranton. Robert is now fully separated and or divorced from Susan. Too bad for her that Andy's taken. It's a date. Hmm? But after a long hug from Kevin and earning Ryan's respect once again, Robert gets right down to getting the drinks going. As the party starts, Robert eggs Aaron into taking a drink. <laughs> Timothy Christmas! <laughs> and she continues to get thoroughly intoxicated, reducing her inhibitions, mainly seen in her behavior, but easily seen when you compare her decision-making skills before and after, especially with Kelly. I will be mean to Jessica if you want me to be. That's okay, I don't want you to do that. Game on. On it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jessica, did you just fart? 
but this wouldn't be a Christmas episode without the third act musical montage. This one features the Trans-Siberian Orchestra's huge hit, which I'm not sure if YouTube's gonna allow, let's see. Well, I'm filming this in the past, so I'm not sure if you heard the music or not, but it's a fusion of classical music with hairband rock and roll, and it's a very Dwight thing. And while he, Creed, and Gabe rock out, we get a few gift exchanges, which are a mixture of jokes and fun gags. Hard and sobering cut into the break room, and Andy ends the Jim Dwight reverse prank off and begins to wonder if a desperate Robert California might hit on a very drunk Aaron, which Andy may or may not have feelings for. Andy, in an effort to fulfill Meredith's wish, What is the status on my wish? Fulfilled! Brought my bicycle so I can be your designated driver later. Has the perfect excuse to follow Aaron and Robert in secret. But it turns out, the CEO is a perfect gentleman, sending Aaron off to her place with no moves being made. And who better to drive her home than Robert? I mean, what a stand-up guy. All of this to Andy's relief, which might actually have become his Christmas wish. This episode closes with... What's everyone staring at? Oh man, I was supposed to tell Dwight something. I got nothing. But with that, let's dive into the deeper meaning. What does a bean mean? Someone please explain it to Cap. You know, if you think about it, a wish reflects your innermost desires. Angela's to have people stop touching her. Meredith's is for Jim and Pam to stop procreating. And Andy's might evolve throughout this episode. There is a reading of Christmas Wishes in which Andy isn't romantically concerned for Aaron to get involved with Robert California, that he just simply cares for Aaron and knowing that she's under the influence of alcohol. Do you think that doing alcohol is cool? Wants to protect her from the <laughs> Lizard King. But I think the much more realistic reading is that Andy's desires are changing throughout this episode and thus his wish is changing throughout this episode. And to be honest, I've never really read it any other way, that Andy is relieved here because he has feelings for Aaron. But if there ever was any doubt, I'm pretty sure that's how Kayleen intended this B plot of the reverse prank war to be read. It's intended to mimic the main storyline. If we compare them together, the story beats all work. The A plot and the B plot. You've got friction and chaos between two people in the office. The friction is based on the current circumstances, but it has a ton of baggage and history as a foundation. There's one innocent bystander trapped in the middle of all of this. In the second act, things escalate significantly. Quick break for Christmas cheer. That musical montage gives Andy a moment to reflect on his real Christmas wish, in which both plot lines intersect. As the night ends, the chaos is resolved with one person knowing the truth and the others none the wiser, surely creating future implications. I like this, it's short and sweet, and it follows the Kayleen writing model in which there's not much of an actual message here other than just listen to your heart. There it is. I'm not even sure that's the message. Kayleen's a complicated person. Who says exactly what they're thinking? What kind of game is that? Let's get into that in the ratings. This is the worst. <laughs> Right, so the cold opening just seems to be an extension of this episode, but the rant, the shot establishing this is an Andy Christmas episode, and the setup, it all works pretty well. I don't think this is gonna like win an award or anything. It's much later now. This did not win an award, uh, but it does work well to thrust us into the episode. So I'm gonna give it just the standard three out of five. There's nothing wrong with it, but it, you know, is what it is. I don't want it. As for the episode itself, well, this is a Kayleen episode. Kayleen also wrote Classy Christmas, an episode that I was pretty surprised how she handled the Jim Dwight relationship, who at that point were kind of becoming friends. But in that episode, she very much creates a lot of tension, and I talked about that at length in that field guide. And in my opinion, it hurt the series in the sense of a lack of continuity. Her vision conflicted with what they had created between Jim and Dwight. Back in the saddle though, she's back to her chaos stuff, but this time I think she nailed how to bring her vision of the Jim Dwight relationship to the screen, with the war that's escalating due to a real prize. And I'll say the pranks themselves take the foreground for this episode for me. To me, it's the highlight of the episode, and that makes sense as that's what Kayleen's all about, and she doesn't love the lovey-dove sitcom trope stuff. She likes the chaos. 
I have a lot of respect for Mindy Kaling. She's had quite the career, and in spite of how the whole Scooby-Doo thing turns out for her in the long run, I think she's an excellent, excellent writer. But you have to remember that this episode just started with her vision. It gets tossed around in the writer's room, punched up from there, and it comes to life with the actors and all of that being directed by Ed Helms. And it's finalized then in the editing bay. Cut so much content, oftentimes 45 minutes, down to just 22. It's a really collaborative effort, and it does make me wonder what Kayleen's original vision for this episode was. But if we had more of this... What are we going to do with all that bonus money, Henrietta? And this... then I think this would be a contender for one of the better Christmas episodes of The Office. It's just bogged down by an A-plot that I simply don't care about because they haven't given me a reason to care about Aaron in the same way they give us a reason to care about Pam in the early seasons. Aaron is not a human. She is a caricature. The plays that showing a deeper side of Aaron are mostly undercut by her weird and bizarre behavior that immediately follows. You wrote it in an email, so... Which one are you? A murderer or a liar? Andy, on the other hand, they kind of seems human. Like they've really dug in on humanizing him at least. So seeing him with an attractive and seemingly stable girl, I'm inclined to be happy for him. But he's drawn to Aaron for reasons the show has not elaborated on for years. Maybe I'm alone in this, but that's why I think this episode suffers. Remove this A plot, and we'll just like relegate it to a very deep C plot, and I think we might have a winner, because the Jim Dwight stuff really works. As it is, all up, I think I'm gonna give Christmas Wishes a two out of five. This is fireable. But that's just what I think about this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, do all the YouTube stuff, and join me next time when we cover trivia. Three, two, good luck, one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.